Welcome to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. Stay tuned to hear how you can get a copy of this program and other helpful documents. And now it's time for Carrie McCoy to get all up in your business. Thank you, Tim. Like Tim said, I'm Carrie McCoy, and it's time for me to get up in your business. Before we start, I want to introduce the people at the table. We have, who you just heard from, Tim Bowen, our technician, who will be taking your calls and pushing the buttons. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. And recording our show to make a podcast available next week is our technician, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. No problem. This show, Up in Your Business with Carrie McCoy, began with Entrepreneurs in Mind, a platform for me, a small business owner, and a guest to pay forward our experiential knowledge in a conversational way. As with all new endeavors, it has some unexpected outcomes, like the show is not just for entrepreneurs and wannabe entrepreneurs, but for everyone. We're all inspired by everyday people's American-made stories of how they worked hard, made mistakes, took risks, and found their voice. Another is that business is creative, more so than I ever thought, and last, behind each of my successful guests is the heart of a teacher. Joining me today is no exception, Mr. Wilson Kennedy. He teaches people about marketing on the internet. And boy, oh boy, what a challenge that is. Google AdWords and Google Analytics have a vocabulary of their very own, making the learning curve extremely challenging. On the top, on top of that, he is raising and homeschooling 10, count them, 10 children. And I hope they're all listening right now. And I promise I'll behave today just for you. (laughs) If you're just tuning in for the first time, you may be asking yourself, what's this lady's story? And why does she have a radio show? Well, Tim is here to tell you. Thank you, Carrie. Over 40 years ago, with only $400, Carrie McCoy founded Arkansas Flag and Banner, now flagandbanner.com. During the last four decades, the business has grown and changed dramatically from door-to-door sales to telemarketing to mail order and catalog sales, and now Flag and Banner relies heavily on the internet, including our newest feature, live chatting. Each decade required a change in sales strategy and procedure. Her business and leadership knowledge grew with time and experience, as well as the confidence to branch out into multimedia marketing that began with our nonprofit Dreamland Ballroom, as well as our in-house publication, Brave Magazine, and now this very radio show that you're listening to. Each week on this show, you will hear candid conversations between her and our guests about real-world experiences on a variety of businesses and topics that we hope you'll find interesting. Carrie says that many business rules like treat your employees well, know your profit margin, and have a succession plan can be applied across most industry. What I find encouraging is her example that hard work pays off. Did you know that for nine years while starting Flag and Banner, she supplemented her income with many part-time jobs? And that just shows that persistence, perseverance, and patience prevail. Today, Flag and Banner has 10 departments, and I have 25 coworkers. It reminds us all that small businesses really are the fuel of our country's economic engine, and they do empower people's lives. If you would like to ask Carrie a question or share your experience or story, you can send an email to questions at upyourbusiness.org. Wow, thank you, Tim. I know I said this last week, which was that that show was not going to be like any other show, and it wasn't. Last week, after a year and a half of being on the air, we had our first returning guest, Maxi Dominguez of Riot. I'm going to say it right. Raiz Apparel. Raiz. You got it. I did it. I wish I'd have done it when he was on the show. He came back last week, Maxi did, and gave us an insightful monologue about his past year's entrepreneurial journey. I think that guy's an old soul. Y'all think that? Absolutely. I do too. People, if you didn't hear this young man, or if you're at a fork in the road in your career and contemplating taking another path, you should go and listen to Maxi Dominguez of Raiz Apparel, our episode number 77, and hear what he has to say. It was really, really insightful. And there are lots of ways you can do that. You can go to flagandmanner.com and click on the radio show, or you can or you can subscribe through iTunes, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast app by searching for flagandbanner.com. 
at the risk of sounding repetitive, I'm going to say it again. Today's show is not going to be like any other show. If you signed up for our UIYB eblast at upyourbusiness.org, then you already know today, I am the interviewee. My friend and co-worker Wilson Kennedy is here, and he is going to be the interviewer. Howdy, folks. This all came about one day while he and I were yucking it up in the office and having a gay old time of it. And someone, and I think it was you, Wilson, said, Carrie, we should interview you on the radio show. And boom, that's how today's episode was hatched. Before we start, I want to tell our listeners a little bit about you, Wilson. (laughs) He's mad about this. All right, listeners, I'm going to paint you a picture on the radio. I have never seen Wilson in anything but blue jeans. He has a full head of what used to be red hair that you will never see because he always wears a baseball cap on backwards. He is smart, crazy smart with numbers, and is an Excel spreadsheet guru. He's a graduate from the uber-conservative Hillsdale College in Michigan with honors in finance. For about two years, he worked as an analyst for Stevens, Inc. in Little Rock, Arkansas, but couldn't conform to the (laughs) daily grind of corporate America and went on on his own. Imagine that. From his home on the Arkansas prairie, he freelances for numerous small businesses such as mine and for some really big ones like Dillard's, Westco, Carlton Bates, Pandora Jewelry, and the WWE. His specialty is navigating the monster platform for Google AdWords and analytics to help his clients make more money from their websites. I said Wilson was crazy smart, but he's also just plain old crazy. Listen to this part of his life. He is a homesteader bordering on a prepper. I never knew what a prepper was until I met you. Tell everybody what a prepper is. I, I'm not sure how I define it right now. I mean, it, it, uh, people who are prepared for the worst are prepared for different situations. Lives out in the woods prepping for the end. You know what's better than a good neighbor? What? No neighbor. <laughs> He's a cynic, too. I didn't put that in there, but I should. <laughs> It'll show up. He has two or three beautiful children from his saintly wife that he sired, and together they adopted in an effort to keep the brothers and sisters together. Get ready. Get ready. He adopted a family of seven children, with the oldest being 14 at the time, I think, when you adopted them. It's all fuzzy. It's been a while. Yeah. I am pleased to say it all worked out. They are happy, healthy, and, of course, homeschooled, because that's what he does. From the stories he tells me, they are also lucky to have each other. But I'm not a Pollyanna. I know it's not paradise out there with kids. I had four myself. It is a pleasure to welcome to the table my polar opposite on all social views. (laughs) (laughs) No, hey, uh, you and I might as well not even go to the uh, to vote because we just cancel each other out. Thank you. Yes, a contributing American citizen who is not just running his mouth but doing something about it. My coworker, my friend, and today's interviewer, Mr. Wilson Kennedy. Thank you for the introduction. That was great. So you want to change chairs since you're interviewing me and I'm interviewing you? Uh, let's we'll theoretically change chairs. I just like to make Tim and Jesse I'm jump around up. and try yeah. to have to go test, test, one, two, <laughs> test, test. It would be difficult to do live. I know. It would be difficult to do live. We'd have to make all of our listeners kind of tortured. They can it. pretend we, I mean. All right, well, shuffle it's... around. All right, we just changed chairs. Okay, what's your first question, Wilson? Man, so I got... Everything we're doing cleared with legal, so I think I think we're good. And that legal means your children? We're not getting in trouble for what happens here today. Who's your legal counsel? Don't worry about that. Ten children? Yes, pretty much. Pretty much. (laughs) Um, You were on speaker when I was on the phone with you this morning, by the way, so it's not like you have to edit anything just for them. Um, (laughs) Oh, I don't even know what we said. All right, good. We won't repeat it here. So this is awesome. I'm just thrilled to be here, thrilled to get your story out. I, I want that to be the focus of everything we're doing today. But let's go back to the very beginning. And you've got all the boilerplate that we hear at the beginning of every show people are familiar with. So I want to dive in sort of at a different level. It's it's 1975. How old are you? 20 years old. 20 years old. Mm -hmm. You start with a single product, just the basic American flag. Am I right? Correct. Why that? Well, I'd been working for a company in Dallas, Texas called Betsy Ross Flag Girls. And I ended up working for them. Well, you know, 
it kind of really started in high school. I wasn't very good in high school, so I graduated barely from high school because I missed so many days because I skipped a lot of school. <laughs> I'm a high school dropout. Oh, I know that about you. Yeah, yeah. Why are entrepreneurs, a lot of us high school dropouts? I don't know. I hear that a lot. Do you know that Jennifer Lawrence, the movie star actress, doesn't even have a GED? Man, I'm ahead of her. She didn't even have it. She quit in 10th grade and went to Hollywood. Man, I wish somebody told me about it in the 6th grade. It would have saved a lot of people a lot of heartache. Shh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Already it's bad. <laughs> Get your education. You need an education. All right, so, uh, so I, but every, my brother and sister, I'm the youngest of three, and my brother and sister went off to school. And so they went off to college, and my sister was an accountant, one of the a female accountant back then which is very, very rare, because my mother kind of told me when I went off to college, she said, you can be a secretary, a nurse, or a teacher. I don't know yep. how my sister ended up an accountant. But um, they just all sounded awful. But I, I picked secretary, and I went to college for a semester, and I was just terrible at it, just like I was in high school. It was just kind of just continued. So I came home, and I became a telephone operator for Southwestern Bell when I was 18 years old. And you are tethered to a switchboard, just like they see in the old movies, you know, mm -hmm. with those cables. I did that for about six months and thought, I'm going to kill myself if I have to do this the rest of my life. You were life. actually working the cables. I was pulling those cords. Just, I know, in a long time ago. Yeah. And um, you couldn't even get up from your desk without raising your hand, and somebody had to come and plug into your port. And, I mean, you couldn't move. And you, we worked in four-hour shifts, and I thought, I'm going to die. It was, the, it was the best paying job with the best benefits and the best union. And everybody was like, you've got a great job. You need to keep it. And I just couldn't do it. So I came home, really upset again. And my mother, and I, I loved clothes all my life. So my mother said, in the back of your 17 magazine, there is a school, a Votech school, kind of before Votech schools were popular, mm -hmm. and said, why don't you go to this school? in Dallas, Texas. It's one year, and their focus is on fashion merchandising. And I was scared to death to go to another school, but I said, okay. So I packed up, and I went to Dallas, and I lived in these apartments with girls. And we took a bus over to the Apparel Mart, and we went to school actually in the Apparel Mart. And because it was a Votech school, it moved really, really slow. And because it was for 18, for kids that had graduated from high school, we had a lot of uh, college courses. But instead of doing them in three months, we took a year to do it. So mm -hmm. like I took uh, Accounting 101, but it we did it over 12 months. So I learned it. We did yeah. everything in the classroom instead of having to go home and read it and do it out of the classroom, which I was not good at reading. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm dyslexic or something. And then uh, we took first year of law, you know, first year of marketing. We took all this first year stuff. And, when I, and I graduated straight A's. And I thought, oh, awesome. I'm pretty smart. And I was working two jobs there. And so I thought, well, I, when I graduate, I'll just go to work for Neiman Marcus. I was already working for Neiman Marcus and Sanger Harris two department stores that mm -hmm. were really big. And I thought, well, I'll go there and be a buyer. Well, the recession, recession of 1974 hit, and gas lines were around the corner, and you couldn't get – you couldn't – I mean, people were not eating out. People were not buying clothes. People have no imagination for this now. What do you mean? Like gas lines and nobody eating out. Like we have – has it ever been like that? Like have you seen it like that since? No, I have never seen because there's no way we would have been getting uh, hair extensions and fake fingernails if we were poor back then. Yeah. I mean, you see poor people with fake fingernails and hair extensions and new jeans and, you know, I don't know. It's just, yeah, I mean, we, we don't really know what it's like to really not have stuff. Yeah. You know, to really not have stuff. You know, because I, I, I'm not giving up my hair appointments myself either. I know. <laughs> just, it ain't happening. I mean, I'm not. You're I'll cutting skip, the food budget way I'll before that. I'll cut the food budget yeah. before I won't go get my hair appointment. I'm sorry. But uh, anyway, um, so. You're, you're in that time, and you're looking around. The economy sort of tanking. You thought you were oh, going to yeah. be a buyer at Neiman so, Marcus. But now. I'm not going home. Yeah. I'm not going back to Little Rock. I am not going back home again. I've already done that after college. I'm mm -hmm. like, I am not going to be the, that person that keeps running back home. So I go to Snelling & Snelling, an uh, a employment agency, and they get me a job selling flags for this man called Betsy Ross Flag Girls that's still in existence today, Jack huh. Casey. And I went there, and I was scared to death, and I was probably – 19 now and and uh, or maybe maybe just barely 20 i only worked there six months and 
he <laughs> and this lady taught me all about the flag business. And then after about two weeks of you know learning about American flags and state flags and the different fabrics and the different sizes, she just turned around to a map on the wall and pointed to it and said, "All right, go out to Irving, Texas, this part of Dallas, and drive around. And every time you see a flagpole, go in and tell them, ask them if they want a flag, because flags were out every six months to a year." So I just drove out there in my little Camaro and started selling flags door to door, and I was so friggin' scared. I yeah. can't even tell you how scared I was. I mean, I'm walking in. Well, that's not secretary or teacher or any of the things that your mother outlined for you. That's because I couldn't sales. do that. That's getting out and. Well, if you, can, I think a lot of salespeople might be dyslexic or something because we have to learn to make money another way because we can't sit at a desk. If I could have been those other things, I absolutely would have taken that safer route. I mean, if I could have been a great secretary and typed like my girlfriend 110 words a minute, I'd have done that in a New York minute. But I just couldn't. Yeah. I mean, you know, and you just, you know, you just had to. And I wasn't going to ask my mother and dad for money. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just didn't do that, you know. So you felt necessity. Like it was just, this has to work. Yes, because my mother and father were not rich, and they, you know, if mother was going to give me money, then that means she was going to not get a new pair of shoes, you know. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't going to do all that. So so I was going to have to make it work. And so I just started going door to door. And back then you had purchasing agents. in everybody, everybody had a purchasing agent, and you didn't call them up back then, and you didn't email them back then. You walked in the front door. So you got to see all these purchasing agents. You just walk into the secretary because we actually had secret, uh, receptionists, rather, mm-hmm. that, answered, that were at the front. And you said, I'm here with Carrie Mc- I'm Carrie, well, I was Carrie Krause back then. I'm Carrie Krause with Betsy Ross Flag Girls, and I sell flags for a living. Is your purchasing agent here? I saw yours was worn out outside. She said, oh, just a minute. So she'd call me in there, and he'd come out, and then he'd ask me in the back room and pin me against the wall, and I'd run out the back door. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, 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 we're going to come back to that. That's, that's, a, that's a later section. I, I think that was a shoot comment right there. You know, I look back now, I got to see a lot of male purchasing agents because I was <laughs> cute <laughs> and young and naive. And it was fine. I sold a lot of flags. But after about six months, I was like, my roommate I was living with, she was moving home. And what else? My... Um, my my i don't know you know the rose had fallen off the bloom is that it yeah is that the way you Petals say fly it? Here, yeah yeah and you know i just didn't have anybody left in dallas everybody from school had gone different directions and so i thought well i'm gonna go home so i ended up going home with my tail between my legs after all and when i got there i said to my mother mother what am i gonna do and she said carrie no, actually, I went home to see my brother get married. And when I was home, I was kind of down in the mouth. And she said, why don't you move home? I said, I can't do that. And she said, come on. And I said, what would I do? And she said, we'll start a flag company here. And I said, could we do that? And my mother and father were small business owners. My dad, okay. was, a, my dad was a bill collector. And my father owned A1 Ambulance in North Little Rock, which is a whole other story. But anyway, uh, so I, they knew a little bit about small businesses. And so mother said, we'll just. So you kind of had an example. You didn't think you needed to be a corporate career type because of your parents. You know, they would have liked for me to. Yeah. You know, being a small business owner, dad had good years and bad years and good years and bad years. You know how that is. Yes. Preach. (laughs) You know how that is. Roll tight on that. So mom said, well, just while you're home, why don't you call the secretary of state's office and call the school board and find out where they're buying flags. So I did. I called around and they said, from California. And so I told mother, she said, well, you go back and find out where to buy flags from and come back here and start your own flag company. And I said, can I do that? She said, it costs $50 to get a license at the city of Little Rock to start a business. That's all you need. And I had $400 in the savings. And I said, okay. And so uh, I went back and did that. And when I came back, I called, she said, you need to call this businesswoman in North Little Rock, Irma Dumas, who owned Irma Dumas Dress Shop. She said, ask her, any, ask her for advice. And so I called her up. And I told her who I was, and I told her I was wanting to start my own business, and did she have any advice? And I have no idea what she said, but it was the first time I ever picked up the call and picked up the phone and really made good a good cold call, a good cold mm-hmm. call. And so that was another huge leap, to pick up the phone and make a good cold call. Walking in cold off the street, learning to use the phone to make cold calls, those were important things. So you used to be um, intimidated to do these kind of things? Everybody's who, intimidated. To no, no, no. This. People who meet you now can't fathom it. Every I almost didn't graduate from high school because I couldn't stand up and make a speech in speech class. 
the first time I had to stand up in a business room and say to people, they were like, go around the room and everybody stand up and tell who they are. And I was like, oh, my God. My hands were sweating so bad. My armpits were so wet. I stood up and said, who oh, cares? I said, I'm Carrie McCoy, and I own Arkansas Flag and Banner. It was the scariest thing I've ever done. I'm kind of rocked back a little bit right now. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Oh, my gosh. I so I'm going to have to come off from high school because here's this, like, girl who can't do anything. I could do something. Well, yeah, you could do something, but, like, you couldn't. You were scared to call Sca- and show everybody up. Everybody is scared to do that when they're young. But everybody. when we see people like you now, we think it's natural, and it's been that way all their life. So how on earth did you get from that girl there? What, did your personality change? Like Everybody's personality happened? changes every 10 years. Not- I was a mother for one decade. I was a... 20-year-old have-a-good-time girl for one decade. You're going to avoid those stories. We're gonna, I was a 30-year-old mother of four and a 40. Actually, I had my last kid at 40-ish, so in yeah. 40s. Businesswoman. Everybody changes all the time. I mean, now I'm the matriarch. Who would ever think? I mean, when you're 20, you ever think you're going to be a matriarch of a family? And now I'm yeah. a matriarch of a family. They call me up and ask me questions. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Somebody Suckers. wants my advice. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that to my mother, but she's gone now. So, so you, your mom, your mother basically said, "Hey, it's fifty dollars." You felt like she believed in you when she said that. My mom and dad always believed in all their kids. Because you have certain people who are sort of motivated by having a chip on their shoulder, like I'm going to show them. Then you have other people who seem to be motivated by, well, I've got great support, and so I can just let it rip. You're more in the great support, let it rip category. No, mother never went to one PTA meeting. She never darkened the door of one school I was ever at. But she believed in you on this business side. My mother, what's those people that are scared to go out of their house called? I don't know. Agoraphobic. My mother was agoraphobic. That's, that he does awesome. do that. He thinks of words for me all the time. That was Tim, y'all. Uh, my mother was agoraphobic and actually in her 60s had to take that drug Paxil or something to wow. go out of the house. So I think my mother pushed me out in front of her a lot because my mother was agoraphobic maybe. But she, um, she never pushed us kids to really do anything. She, they never really told us we were great, ever. It was just every day we just got up and did whatever we had to do. I guess there was this sense of responsibility in our family where I look at other people's parents sometimes, and I'm like, wow, I had really just nice, normal parents. They weren't any way, any – there's not one word to describe any of them other than uh, just good people. They weren't anything. we got to take a break. Awesome. All right. Tim, do you want to take a break and I come? I believe we should. All right. Uh, let me tell everybody who we are. We'll continue our conversation with me, Carrie McCoy, president, of fa- president and founder of Arkansas Flag and Banner, and Wilson Kennedy, a self-made man and a freelance Google analyst expert who's interviewing me. And at the bottom of the hour, which is like five minutes away, we'll take calls. So listen and get your questions ready. You're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of flagandbanner.com. If you miss any part of this show or you want to learn more about Up In Your Business, go to flagandbanner.com and click Radio Shore. Or you could subscribe through iTunes, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast app simply by searching for flagandbanner.com. Lots of listening options. We'll be right back. Arkansas Flag and Banner is proud to underwrite Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. McCoy began this broadcast a year and a half ago with the intention of offering a mentoring platform for those with an entrepreneurial spirit. Through candid conversation and interesting interviews with business and community-minded Arkansans, listeners gain insight into starting and running a business, the ups and downs of risk-taking, and the commonalities of successful people. Carrie McCoy, founder and president of Arkansas Flag and Banner, believes in paying knowledge and experience forward and developed this radio show as a means of doing so. The biographies, life experiences, and wisdom of her guests would likely go unheard if not for this venue. Rarely do people open up for an hour to an audience about their life, mistakes, triumphs, and pitfalls. This unique radio show allows the listener intimate access into the stories of prominent leaders in our state. I am Adrian McNally, manager of the Arkansas Flag and Banner Showroom and Gift Shop, located on the first floor of the historic Taborian Hall on the corner of 9th and State Streets in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. In business for 43 years, 
We offer an old school shopping experience with front door parking, clerks to help you, and department store variety. Open to the public Monday through Friday, 8 to 5.30, and Saturday, 10 to 4. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy. I'm speaking today with Wilson Kennedy, a self-made man and a freelance Google analyst expert. Today, we have flipped the format of this show, and my guest, Wilson, is interviewing me, Carrie McCoy, founder and president of Arkansas's Flag and Banner, a.k.a. FlagandBanner.com. Wilson, awesome. we haven't even gotten to 20 yet, and I know, i got we're gonna 40 have to more years to go. Ground. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm so, just a talker. I know. I'm going to have to cut you off. Oh, that's bad news. Um, so okay, you're selling. Let's just you're selling flags in Little Rock somehow or back. another. Mm-hmm. When did you back. realize you had something? Like when did this go from hey I can pay the bills to hey I should build a business? Nine years after the business was in business. Not after the business was in business for nine years. So we came back. I came back and got my city permit and started selling flags door to door in the day. And then at night I got a waitress job and I started waiting tables. And then my father and mother had this little had had a new business that they that they had gotten. Oh, excuse me. And it was called um, it was called uh, Radar Sonics, and they were making depth finders for boats. And they had the so they kind of assembly line, and I would bring mm-hmm. home parts, and they would let me work on parts, and they would pay me piecemeal work. So I had a cocktail waitress, a piecemeal job, and then I started cooking and catering out of my house and selling my food to people that were catering and stuff, so that I could make more money. So nine years, we get to the mid eighties. Well, my daughter was born in seventy nine. Yeah. So we're, we're, I'm doing all this. When she's born, we're doing all of that. Well, actually, when we first started the business, I ran it out of my father's shop. He had a secretary at the front door, and so he told me I could keep the last line. There were three lines coming in, and he said I could, and I still have the number today that he gave me, 375-7633. It was the last line on his three lines push button lines that he had and when if, if a number rolled over so it's like if you could have three phone calls it would roll over to that mm-hmm. to that line but if someone just called in on that line his secretary would answer the phone and say arkansas flag and banner and then he'd say she's out selling right now I'll have her call you back so i actually did that with him for years and then when my daughter was born in 79 i moved it into my house and they invented the year my daughter was born they invented those um those answering machines oh yeah Tapes. Tapes. And I had the very first answering machine I think ever sold in Little Rock, probably. <laughs> I did, or one of them. And I ran down, got that sucker, and put that on, and so I could, you know. So the world stuff. is so much different now. Oh, my gosh. And changes every 10 years so much. But socially, here you are. You're a young woman, and you're starting a business. Arkansas is not at the cutting edge of progressive culture. Were there advantages to being in Arkansas and trying to do this? And were there disadvantages to being in Arkansas and being a woman trying to start a business? The advantage of being in Arkansas is it really is the land of opportunity. You're a big fish in a small pond. So it's easier to make mistakes and to grow and to feel and to fill niches that were that are not filled. I mean, you couldn't go to New York and try to sell flies because there would be five companies already up there doing it that had years of experience. Yeah. So it was really great that it was a it was a wide open, clean slate for me to start doing that, to start selling flags. And then it was also in the seventies, so I was a quota. Females were women's lib was big, and females were. Where people were having to meet quotas. So I was woman-owned business. So people almost had to buy from you. Well, they didn't have to, but they but loved it. There was nowhere else felt, to buy in Arkansas yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And then they got to check the woman-owned box that, hey, Camp Robinson gets to buy, is buying flags from a woman-owned business. I get to check that box. Mm-hmm. So all these government entities were like, this is a good, she's a good quota. She's one of my quotas. And then the other thing is I got to buy a house when I was in my very early 20s, like 21 and single. I got to buy a house. A single woman got to buy a house because I met a quota, and they were trying to have single women buy houses because I don't really think women really could much before that. So in a lot of ways, the timing was perfect. Being a female was perfect. And when I sent out letters, I didn't realize this, but my name, Carrie, K-E-R-R-Y, is the is a boy's spelling for that name. And I didn't know that. And so a lot of people would think I was a man if I did if I worked with letters. And we worked with letters back then. Everything so you kind of got some benefit of the doubt, and then you got a different benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. I just played the angle whichever way I needed to. So you never 
you never took it as a negative. You're like, oh, this is harder because I'm a woman. Never. Never. It never crossed my mind. It never crossed my mind. That's astounding. I mean, I'm not saying that it's astounding about you in general, but just the... I never found any... Um, the, you know, I, I, the only real handicap I ever had in my whole life was my inability to do school well. And I'm fine with that now. That, you know... But let's talk about that. I mean, look at where you are now and some of the stories you told earlier. What value do you put on college? Well, I tried to get all my kids to go do a year of college before they, I mean, a year of work before they went to college. And, you know, all you got to do is say that and they'll do the opposite. So they all went straight into college and all graduated and did really good. Yeah. <laughs> If I'd have said, you have to go to college, they'd have, none of them would have gone. But yeah, they'd I, still be backpacking through Europe. They'd still, I know, but I was like, why don't y'all take a year off and figure out who you are and then go to college? And they're like, nope, we've got to go straight into college. So, uh, no, I love college. I think college is fine, but I don't like it when you want to be 30 years old and you keep going back to school and you keep going back to school. And then you go in and you try to apply for a job and they say, what's your experience? And you say, well, I'm a professional student. I've been a student my whole life. Yeah, sweet you know, give us some experience. I want some experiential no knowledge that you've gained. There's just some things you cannot learn in the classroom. Oh, yeah. So, um, after my daughter was born, I moved it into my house. And right about that time, the Lillian Vernon catalog became popular. Gotcha. Well, I hate to skip ahead. Oh, We've got okay. limited time. All right. All right. 1995. 1995. The way I understand it, you go to a luncheon that's hosted by Aristotle. No, it's hosted by a college, University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Okay. It was hosted by the – who stood up and talked about the internet there? Uh, I don't remember, but okay. I was at a, ta a round table sitting next to Marla Johnson from there you go. Aristotle. Okay. And she started telling me about this crazy thing called the internet. And I knew, and she I might left. have even said like information superhighway or something ridiculous. I'm sure she did. I mean, you know, worldwide. Well, it was webs. back then. I know. Like, remember we used to like the fibers, we did the graphics as like the road and like the little data pieces where the cars going down them. I mean, it was all, all hokey, but we didn't know what we were talking about, so it worked. <laughs> So, 1995, you get this idea of the internet. What was said to you in 95 where you're like, oh, this is what I got to do? Because it's just, not what everybody was doing at the time. There were still yellow pages. I just, you know, we just started, she just started talking or we all started talking. Somebody else at the table was talking about how people will just go onto your computer and they will type in these things they want and search for it. And then up it will pop and how the, and I was like... I was already doing $11,000 a year in yellow page ads. Flags and banners are flags. Mm -hmm. mostly. So flags are a specialty item. You cannot walk in anywhere to a store and go, I think I'll buy a flag. I mean, you can now at Walmart, but back then, a little bit, and only around the 4th of July. But if you want a flag, you have to search for it. So at the time, everybody was searching for the, was using the Yellow Pages. So we were in Yellow Pages all over the United States. Everywhere really? we could afford to put up our name, we were doing that. Part of the reasons we named Arkansas Flag and Banner, Arkansas Flag and Banner with an A, is because it moves you to the front. Because it moves you to the top. And my mother said... You want to be, you, you want to try to have a name that starts with an A. Yeah, triple A flags. I mean, that's what people would do back in the yellow, pa exactly. yellow page days. That's exactly right. So I was Arkansas flag and banner, moving me to the top of the page wherever I ran a yellow page ad. And when she said, and so people, I'd already figured out that people search for my product. Yes. Then they find it. And I defined it as a specialty product. And then when she said they're going to search this, this computer, their computers to find, uh, flags to find anything. I was like, this is the next way I'm going to reach customers. So I went back and I called her and she originally named, she named Arkansas Flag and Banner. She taught me so much stuff. I was like, what's the difference in an email? I mean, I really, it was just, God, she's like you trying to explain to people Google AdWords language. She was trying to explain to me internet language in 1995 i couldn't even understand it well, so, the thing, there were naysayers too like in 95 there were, there, were pl there were people who said that this is a fad and it's going to go away and it's a stupid investment there were there Absolutely. were people that said no one will ever shop on it because they'll never yeah, have oh, the security never give a credit card well Absolutely the very not. first website we did was just a yellow page ad there was no shopping cart on it she named the company flag dash banner it cost twenty thousand dollars in 1995 to put up a uh to put up a um yellow page ad basically four or five pages and and she did the they, their company did the whole thing 
I couldn't even fathom what I was supposed to do. I knew I wanted to do something. She named it Flag Dash Banner. She took my catalog and she made a beautiful landing page. And back then you made these landing pages that were these entry level pages. You know, you, you didn't have any content on it. It oh, yeah. was just a pretty graphic and you clicked on which department you wanted to go to. Like, I want to go into the flags. And then you went to the flags page and you read the content. And but it, 20 grand, how big of a risk is that? Oh my God, it damn near bankrupted me. And nobody was buying. Then we did another one within a year with a shopping cart and couldn't get that to work worth the crap. And then we did another, I mean, we for the probably all the way till about 1998, I think I put a second mortgage on my house actually. Or, no, no, I think I went to the bank and took a mortgage on the, arch I don't remember what I did, it's been so long ago. But anyway, I had to go. We almost bankrupted trying to figure the internet out and trying for, for, and trying for American the users to catch up to us because they were not that just like the naysayers were saying they were not ready for this and I was ready Marla was ready we had done probably three renditions of the websites you know frames and Java uh, I can't even I don't yeah, remember it just, but it's all the mess all the, the they they loaded we weird and it was all done in frames one time and then we put the shopping carts on and the shopping carts are not good and so and they won't link to your accounting package so you have to go retype every dead gum order that came in yeah luckily you weren't getting any so it wasn't that much of a problem <laughs> <laughs> don't solve problems you don't have, you know. Um, yeah, I'd like to. I remember the day we sold two hundred dollars. I remember Wendy Ross was working for me. She ran it. She goes, "We sold two hundred dollars. We sold two hundred dollars on the shopping cart." Yeah, like, great. That means I can pay you for like three months ago. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Checks on the way. Don't, don't worry. I really thought we did the jackpot, though. But you, you have okay. You have this gut feel. Yeah, and every, haven't you managed a lot on your gut feel? Yes, this radio show is a gut feel. I love this radio show. You heard the story about this radio show yes. and how it came to about. Oh, too bad. And, and, no, and I've been in the background talking to your staff the whole time, telling them I think this is nuts. But here I am. This radio show. Yes, I'm one of your naysayers. I was. I was. I mean, obviously, I'm here now. You. I'm like, why what are we does doing? everybody naysay everything I do? Why do you do everything you do? I mean, there needs to be some balance. There needs to be a dadgum anchor somewhere with these sales. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's real. You know, I know I'm, I'm being sort of flippant, but you have yeah. these gut feelings and you follow them uh -huh. and you're not destitute. They don't all How's work. That? They don't all work. I tried to open up a restaurant one time called Splatter Platters when everybody used to be splattering everything with, with paint and they were going in and they were splattering plates and splattering walls and splattering tables. And it was just, and they were, and I wanted to open up a restaurant called Splatters and serve, and I made up a menu what where you could serve this? splatter platters and we were going to. What year? Come on, give me give me some context. Okay. 2014. Shit, no. <laughs> <laughs> so when did when was splatter platters? Well, coming it was before along? I bought the Taborian Hall downstairs, which downtown, which everybody thought I had gone bonkers to buy the Taborian Hall downtown, and that damn near bankrupted me too. But. It didn't. In the How moment. many near bankruptcy stories do you have? Because you've mentioned like three. three in the last I have three that seconds. I can think of right off the bat. So that means probably four. I can think <laughs> of three. I've refinanced my house twice. I've refinanced the Taborian Hall once, and I've borrowed money from my mother once. People don't understand that. Everybody looks at people who are in positions like you are. They see the building. They see the advertisements. I mean, I, I'm not exactly sure what you drive, but they see the car, and you just think I, it. I just all drive a Chrysler. But you think it all works. Oh, I know. That's why you need this radio show. So that people can hear that it's a struggle forever. But it's worth it. It's why so is it worth, it? worth it. So one of my favorite quotes is uh, Frederick Nietzsche. He, and I'm going to butcher it because I'm live. He who has a why can endure any how. I don't even know what that means. If you have a reason why you're going to do something, you can endure any how that it has to be. Like if I tell you, you got to if you have this goal and I tell you you've got to run a marathon to get to it, you're like you'll go run the daggum marathon. Whereas if it was just like go run a marathon, you're like oh, I'm not going to do that. That's too deep for me. Well, but let's. What was your why? Why did you do this? Why didn't you just fold up and go? home? I don't think that uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs think about the whys as much as they are creative. I think it has to do with creativity, and I didn't realize that till just about two years ago, actually, till we started this radio show. And I found out that these people that are creative cannot stop creating stuff, and that business is creative, and you create businesses, and creating businesses is fun. It's it's. Yeah, but uh, creative people fail all the time and create garbage too well they need to listen to me and call me and i'll tell them what to do 
No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. In fact, I was getting acupuncture yesterday from Michelle Joplin, who was on here not too long ago. And she said, Carrie, you've got to help me. I, and she started asking me all these questions. And I'm laying there with the thing over my eyes. And she's sticking needles in my feet and legs. And she had the simple, her solution to her problem was so incredibly simple. Okay. Raise your prices $5. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many entrepreneurs, including myself, never raised their prices over 10 years? And I did that for 10 years. I never raised my prices for 10 years. Because you didn't think about it or you didn't have the nerve? I didn't have the nerve. And, somebody, and I, somebody came in, a mentor came in and said, you're losing money every year. Your sales may be going up, but you're losing your profit because everything has gone up around you and you're not keeping up with inflation. And he made me, and I said, nobody will buy from me if I raise my prices. He said, that is in your head. You are crazy. And I raised my prices, and it changed my life. It changed the company's life. Not just my life. It changed everybody's life. How many years ago? Probably 15, 20, probably 20 okay. years ago. 20 okay. years ago. I've been in business 40 years, so probably 20 years ago. He was a mentor of mine. I recommend everybody find a breakfast club or something with business mentors over them. The Small Business Development Center, who has also been on here, put together a breakfast club for a bunch of us people that wanted to. We met once a month once a month at a breakfast and there were some older people in there that had been in business for 40 years and the, and then there were younger people in there like me that would come in there with their problems and they would just answer them answer them answer them they'd done mm-hmm. it all they had the answers they were just like well you need to do this you need to do this and i even when it was somebody else at the table with a problem I heard the solution because all businesses have the same problems. Hiring issues, training Hiring. issues, money issues, sales issues. They're all the same. When I ask your employees, they tell me you can look at a resume and tell me what personal problems me? that person has. Yeah, uh, yeah I can. Off a sheet of paper. I can. Once again, it's back to your gut feel. <laughs> no, it's not. You can read it on the rule. <laughs> <laughs> I can look at a resume and go, oh, that's why they haven't been able to keep a job. Of course, Tim, you came in. Did you bring me a resume, Tim? I did. I had Nathan give it to you. What did I say to you? You said I had weird shoes. <laughs> <laughs> he did and still does. No, he doesn't either. So how do you know when you're listening to your gut and you should do it and when you're just believing your own garbage and you're putting yourself at risk? Uh, I have no idea. No, no. If I think about that, I might know. Um, well, I do know the answer to that. Is it coming from your ego? Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. If it's coming from an ego, it's not a good one. If it's coming from creativity or uh, or a need, a need is the absolute best reason to do anything. Is you've got a need. I'd have never I started Arkansas Flag and Bear if I didn't have a need for money and I needed an income. I'd have never worked all those jobs out of my home if I didn't need an income and I didn't need to stay at home with my daughter. Um, everything that's ever happened has come from a need. You start doing stuff out of ego, which you can hear my employees say, now check my ego on this. Is this for real or, you know, because egos never, egos never are, are never a good place to work. What's from. a decision you made from your ego that didn't work out? I'm sure there's one. I try to block that stuff. I would you. Uh, um, you know, I have the best ability to forget stuff. Shit like that. Nobody ever. I don't ever remember anybody being angered. Anybody. I don't remember any bad things that employees do or anything like and that. And it allows you to stay optimistic. It does. Can you teach that to somebody, or is that a personality yes, trait? Yes, I have? learned that. Really? I don't know. It might be a personality trait, uh, but it also can be taught. You How? Can, because there's a serenity prayer, and my first husband um, was a raging alcoholic and drug addict, uh-huh. and. And because, and it just, it, it was probably the worst year of my adult life being married to him and, um, and having a baby and getting off drugs and almost losing Arkansas flag and banner, not because of bad decisions, but because of negligence mm-hmm. and just a time in my life that was so full of personal growth that was actually brought on by my first husband. And, and it sent me to Al Anon. And I learned so much at 24 years old. At Al Anon, that I could, that I just want to write my ex husband thank you notes all the time, who is actually wonderful now and be, got sober at 40 years old and became a Continental Airline pilot. So wow. don't fly Continental. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's retired now. Yeah, totally safe to fly Continental now. Now it's safe. Yeah. But, um, 
you know, going to Al-Anon taught me this prayer that you can use for any single solitary problem in your life that I use every day in my management skills. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things Mm -hmm. I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Can you change your employee? No, you can't change squat. Well, I mean, you can change the employee out, but you can't change, only they can change them. What do you have the courage to change? You have the courage to change procedures. You Mm -hmm. have the courage to fire them. Mm -hmm. You have the courage to accept them the way they are. You have the courage to train them. You have to, so you could do that with every single solitary problem. Is the strength of flag and banner how you manage your relationships? Within the yes, company and exactly, outside. Yes, exactly, exactly. I mean, I, the rest of it's just procedural the whatever co- that Arkansas other Flag people and do. Banner is my firstborn child, and I treat her like that. I gave somebody a promotion yesterday, and somebody else said, what did I do to make you mad? Why didn't I get that promotion? I said, I made a decision for Arkansas Flag and Banner, and it was the best decision for them. You know, it was, again, based on, um, you know, the wisdom to know the difference about, you know— the courage to change the things you can and then change them and to change them without your ego. No ego. Or you could get in trouble. A lot of wars are started over egos. Just think about that. Well, I Woo! think it, that's a scary thought. No, I, I think that, right, that's too deep. Let's do yeah. something else. Okay. Okay. Let's move. Well, we're going to, we're going <laughs> to kind of stay deep because, okay. So it's 1975. You, you start selling flags. Uh-huh. You're 19 years old. Now it's 2018, 19 year old girl comes to you and says, what do I do? They come to me all the time. And I what do you tell them? Uh, I tell them you got to have sales first. Sales first. Everybody first place starts off with, I'm going to buy a store and then I'm going to put some stuff in it and then I'm going to get some sales. Uh-huh. And it's exactly backwards. You need to get your sales, figure it out in your house, get your sales, get your clientele, Make your mistakes. If you can, live in the place that you're going to start your business. Mm-hmm. Unless you've just, someone's given you a, po- passel, a pocket full of money, then, you yeah. know, who cares? Do yeah. whatever you want. <laughs> but if you're starting on your own dime, start it in your home if you can. Start it in your garage um, because those are expenses you would have anyway. Don't start with expenses. And then after your sales get up, then uh, you can move it out if you think so. But moving Arkansas Flag and Banner out of my house, when my daughter started school and we moved Arkansas Flag and Banner out of my house, I had a culture shock. I was working in my house in my robe with, you know, it was nice. Yeah. Cooking lunch. I know people like that now. You. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm jealous. When we moved it out to a storefront, I was like, I had to be at work at 8 o'clock. I had to have my face on at 8 o'clock. That garbage is for the birds. I, I, it was tough. Yeah. It's a culture shock. So don't start fantasizing with your ego again. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be all these things and move out here and have this beautiful life. Go ahead and do the work. Do the grunt work. And work a part-time job so that you can reinvest your money back into your business. You know? Yeah, work a part, no, I do. I work totally. a part-time job to pay your bills and yeah. reinvest the money you make in your business back in your business. Grow your inventory. Man, that's not exciting. That's not the flash and the flare that people are looking for out of the gate at 25 years old. Well. But once again, that goes back to ego. Well, that's true. There you go. Yeah. I think that's the gold nugget. I don't think you're going to beat that in the time we have left. Well, you know, I've been reading a lot about egos lately. I don't know what I've been reading, but I've been reading a lot about <laughs> egos. Oh, I, I know, know what, what it is. It I mean, no, I know what yeah. it was. It's The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Oh, yeah. You know that book? Uh-huh. And it's all about your ego and that voice that talks to you. And is it the right voice talking to you? Is it the wrong voice talking to you? Oh, don't get me started. Go ahead, start. No, I'm going to say things I shouldn't say on the air. I'm going to offend like half your listeners. Oh, So, God. yeah. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Um, so, in 75, being a man in the business world and being a young woman in the business world were two different things, right? Not to me. Not to you, but... Uh, that's the narrative today. Is that fair? You know, I don't think that. Did you, is, no, I do not think that's fair. I think I no, do but not is think it, it, the is fact it, that it's the narrative, like women in the workplace versus you know, that's the, the media. Okay. They're only gonna they're only gonna jump on if it leads. It leads. That's yeah. all they're gonna do because because that's what humans want to hear about. And I was at a women's luminous weekend a few weeks ago on a retreat, and the woman said the reason why other people why humans like to hear the bad news 
was a defense mechanism. I don't know if it's true or not, but she said it was a defense mechanism because if you were living in the woods and sitting around the campfire and you heard a rustling in the bushes, you'd be always listening for the bad news. Mm -hmm. And that was how you saved yourself and protected yourself. And we haven't, isn't that interesting? Never heard that before. So it's like evolutionary. It's evolutionary. They were always looking for the bad news. It's just that now it's a kind of a modern way of doing it with all this TV. Because we're still us. Because we're still us. You still hear the snake rustle in the grass, even though we're sitting inside. Those, Those Things that fire off in our brain keep firing, mm-hmm. even though there's no... So that's why you hear that on the news. And that's pretty much why I've quit watching the news. Man, is, I love that. Isn't that good? Yeah. And uh, that's kind of why I quit watching the news is because it's not beneficial. All right. And it kind of stirs up stuff that doesn't need to be stirred up. I don't think it's good for women's lib to keep beating the same horn, beating the same old drum that was beat 40 years ago. You know, we have a saying at Flag and Banner, so what, what now? I don't want to hear that so-and-so messed up that order. Okay, the order's messed up. So what? What now? Yeah. I don't want to keep beating up on the guy that messed the order up. I don't want to keep beating up on the customer that's an idiot. I want to go, okay, so what? What now? I don't want to keep beating up on what we did back in 1900. I don't want to keep beating up on what we did in 1960. I don't even want to beat up on what we did in 19, in 2010. I would like for us to learn from our mistakes. Yeah. I would like for us to go, you know what? We don't need to start another war. There's never been a good one, ever. Yeah. Except for maybe, well, no, that wasn't a good war either. I can't even ever think of a war that I'd be like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's have a war. The Let's Revolutionary War, that's the only one I would say. You know, I oh, guess so. Gonna, yeah. I don't know. I'm not a historian. You're a lot more smart than I am in that area. I just love America. That's the only reason I said that. <laughs> Did Tim just say that? Did Tim yeah. just say? Can you say he that on the air America? now? Can we say that on the air? I mean, we're a flag yeah. store, right? Yes, we love oh, America. Jesse's got to get up. I, I want to say that once too. I love America too. God. I love America too. Yeah. Shut up, you guys! Oh, oh, the the masculinity's out of control oh, in the room. Say, All this America can loving. Can you see? All right. So, what's All the right. legacy for the business? What Let are we going to tell do? everybody who yeah. who we're talking to in case they don't know who we're talking to? Who are we talking to, Tim? Right now, we're talking to Wilson and you. There we go. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy. I'm speaking today with Wilson Kennedy, a self-made man and freelance Google analyst expert. Today, we have flipped the format on this show, and my guest, Wilson, is interviewing me, Carrie McCoy, founder and president of Arkansas Flag and Banner, a.k.a. Flag and Banner. Okay, we're back. You want to? So let's say that, Wilson, you want me to ask you questions, Wilson? No, this is about you. So we, we damn near bankrupt over the internet. Then we're, let, let me tell everybody how many changes that the businesses has been through. So in 1975, when I started it, it was door to door sales. Yeah. In 1980, it was telemarketing sales because they deregulated Mobile. Mm-hmm. And it became internet and it became telephone marketing. And they invented and they made answer machines. And then in 1990, Lillian Vern and started selling, started mailing out catalog sales, and it became the information age. And they began to learn how to data scrub mm-hmm. and make mailing lists. And Axiom was probably born. I don't know what year it was born in. What year was Axiom born in? You know, I don't know. But anyway, it was in the late 20, 20th century. And so um, we began to buy mailing lists and we began to mail. And I launched my first catalog and began to mail. And then in 2000, it, the internet was in full bloom and I called Marla and I said, Marla, take my flag dash banner dot com name, which I'm so tired of spelling to everybody. They're like dash D A S H. No dash like the sign. So I called up Marla. I said, Marla, you got to rename flag dash banner dot com to something else. And she said, how about just flag and banner dot com? I said, okay, that sounds fine with me. We had no idea. It was the primo number one best name on the planet for a flag and banner. company. I know. People always go, how'd you get that great name? I'm like, I don't know. Ask Marla how you got that name. I don't even yeah, know. I was here when the internet started is how you got it. And so now we're in the internet. What do you think it is now? What do you think? What do you think the next wave is? It's, I know what I think it is. When I was at Stevens, I told people, and this is years ago, I said, if the internet's a baseball game. We're maybe in the top of the second inning. They said, why? And I said, because when I travel to Atlanta, I still don't know where to buy the best cup of coffee, and that's not actually a hard question to answer. And we're getting better at that now. We're not good at it, but we're a lot better. But the social aspects of it are very, very real. And so 
you know, everything that's come along, everybody said, well, you can't sell over that. You can't sell over Google. That's stupid. You can't sell over Facebook. That's just a bunch of kids. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the social interaction and how that kicks in, um, we're seeing a lot of stuff on voice with things like Alexa and Google home. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, I think that's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, I also have the investment track record to prove that I'm really bad at seeing the future. Like I would have kicked Starbucks out of my office. If I was a venture capitalist, I would have kicked YouTube out. I think that's an entirely <laughs> stupid idea, you know? So I'm, I'm not really the best person to ask because clairvoyance into the future isn't really my gig. I think radio and mailing and mail's coming back. I'll go with that because the eyeballs. It's That's where, my prediction. Radio and mail. Where are the eyeballs? No, but not radio, but look at what's happening on YouTube because the news is constrained by 30 minutes or an hour. Well, I can get on YouTube and run a podcast and we can talk for three hours. I know. And people will listen. I mean, there's podcasts that go on for three hours and people blazing listen to it. Gosh, I can't imagine. But I do. Th I'd rather listen to something than watch it because I can't stand to watch those people's faces while I can't even hear the words. I can't listen and watch at the same time. I, I don't appreciate know. seeing you too. <laughs> Next right, time I'll do it, it out of a different room. Oh my God, is it over? Yeah. Oh, Wilson, I, I have a present for you. Hold it, hold oh, it. Oh, that's so funny because I too have a present for you. What is it? Here's yours. It's a flag set with Michigan where you went to school. That is awesome. Uh, Arkansas, United States, and Michigan because you're such a crazy patriot. Excellent. Thank you. You, have a, you really do have a gift for me. Well, it's from your oh. staff for going through and putting yourself on the line this time rather than having someone else on the line. What does that but say? But they went and got you. Oh, a massage? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Do I need this? I have been thinking about this so much. I would love one. Well, it's how do you get the woman who has everything, but, that, you know, that one actually. You might. get me this massage. Yeah. Thank you, listeners at flagandbanner.com. But then it turns out you don't have a grill, so that, that seems like a bad idea. <laughs> I don't cook. Not anymore. <laughs> Those days are over. If you've got a great entrepreneurial story that you'd like to share with me, I'd love to hear from you. Send a brief bio to questions at upyourbusiness.org. You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of flagandbanner.com. If you'd like to hear this program again next week, a podcast will be made available at flagandbanner.com's website. Click on the radio show tab or subscribe through iTunes, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast app simply by searching flagandbanner.com. Flagandbanner.com, you will find links to resources you heard discussed on today's show. Carrie's goal, to help you live the American dream.